Okay, satellite chasers, this is N7RBP. I'm going to give you a real short tutorial here on how I have evolved in working satellites with my ICOM IC9700 and uh, the software that I use. Uh, we're not going to go deeply into actually contacting any satellites this time like we've done in the past. I'm just going to show you how I do it and what's really working for me. I've, uh, I've finally got to the point where I've got, got it down pretty well, actually. So the first thing I do is I'll come in and I'll, I'll start Ham Radio Deluxe. And uh, I bring up this screen. This is uh, uh, the screen that I like for tracking the satellites, actually tracking them. As you can see here, I'm looking at uh, tracking RS-44. Uh, the next pass is going to be a very low pass. It's not going to be worth, uh, there's actually nothing coming at this time. So, But the next pass after that is going to be a good pass. It's going to be pretty much overhead. And I like these predictions. You know, it shows you all the predictions. Uh, well, not all of them, but uh, uh, the next few, well, probably a day's worth, a few hours worth. And uh, basically it shows the position of the uh, satellite at any given point in time. But what I really like about Ham Radio Deluxe is the compass. Uh, the green arrow shows the path of the satellite. And uh, like I say, this one right here, right now, is going to be a, a, a percentage-wise, it's going to be very low. Uh, so that's what this one is showing right now. It's just barely going to be within the, within the circle. But it shows the actual path. If it was uh, going from south to north, it would show the green arrows going up and down. Or if it was going from west to east, it would show them going across like that. Uh, and it's, a, it's really a visually easy to uh, look at and check. So that's why I'm using Ham Radio Deluxe uh, for my tracking. Then the next thing I do, I come over here and I set my 9700 up. Right now it's just set for regular use. And uh, I go into menu and I go into satellites and I change it to the satellite mode. And then the next thing I do is I start up PC SAT 32 or SAT PC 32. Get in focus here. There we go. And I run this on my laptop. And uh, the reason I run it with two computers is you can see that I'm 90 degrees off and it becomes a real hassle to uh, uh, keep turning my head and my body 90 degrees when I'm actually working on the radio over here. <laughs> so I decided to put PC SAT32 on my laptop and it works really quite well that way. So the next thing I do, change hands here, is I'll go up to uh, satellites right here and I will select the satellite I want to use. In this case it's going to be RS-44 and I highlight that and then I go active satellite or activate satellite right there. And so what that does that changes it to RS-44 and uh, Now it's, it is tracking RS-44 as well. However, what I really like to do, well, here's the next thing I do. I'll go over and I'll start the cat control. Right now it's on negative. And I'll take that and switch it over to positive. Which now will make my uh, 9700 perform. It should here any second. <laughs> it will. I'll, uh, I'll cut some of this out so that it isn't so long. But uh, cat control is now active. And uh, 
the fact that the satellite isn't close by, uh, the Doppler is not changing very, uh, very fast at all, uh, obviously. <laughs> but believe me, it does. It uh, switches back and forth from the top to the bottom, and I think most of you with the 9700 uh, know that and are aware of that. And it tracks it, it tracks the Doppler really, really, really well. So the next thing I do is I will open the cat control on PC SAT or SAT PC32. I always get those mixed up. So I go to cat and I open that screen and I'll drag it down here to the left hand corner. Okay. Then what I'll do, when the satellite becomes available, I'll put my headphones on uh, so that I can hear uh, what's going on. And I will wait until it's, till I whistle, I start to whistle uh, in my uh, microphone there. Uh, you can't see it real well kind of dark but uh, anyhow uh, I will talk or whistle into the microphone to see if I can hear myself once I can start to hear myself then I will go over to the up and down arrow on the cat control this middle arrow up and down up and down okay uh, there's smaller increments and larger increments, but I like to use the 100. Uh, that seems to work the best for me. So what I, uh, what I do is I have a little cheat sheet right here. As you can see, the top one says low and the bottom one says high. So when I start to hear myself, and I can hear myself quite well, uh, and if my voice is low, what I'll do is I'll say, okay, I need to click the bottom arrow, because I've got high on the bottom there, so I need to click the bottom arrow to change it to a higher pitch. So I'll click right here. That goes 100, okay? And then if it's still low, I'll click it again. To 200 now that brings my my voice into a normal sound uh, if it happens to be uh, too high if my voice is too high uh, then of course I'll look down here and I'll say okay if my voice is too high I need to go uh, lower so that's the top button so I go right back up here to the top button and I'll go to zero and I'll click 100 and 200 until my voice sounds normal. Once my voice sounds normal, then I'm pretty well good to go. Then I can come over here to the 9700 and I can start calling CQ. And as the Doppler changes, I may want to click those up and down arrows once or twice uh, to keep my voice sounding normal, but uh, uh, not too frequently. Uh, and then if I am calling CQ and if somebody uh, finds me, uh, then we can have a QSO. As you can see there, it started to uh, change for Doppler. Now, if I want to search for somebody, I'll bring the reference up here so that I can see on the waterfall. Okay, there we go. Now, if there's somebody on the waterfall that I see, what I can do is I can just simply turn the VFO knob and I can tune to them. Obviously there's nobody on the waterfall now, but I'll just turn the frequency slightly until they're tuned in. Once they're tuned in, then I can talk to them and the Doppler will follow it just fine. Uh, in the past there was, uh, with Ham Radio Deluxe, there was an issue with snapping back to the original frequency, but that's not happening now. So. Again, if we see somebody on the waterfall that uh, is uh, uh, to the left or to the right, what we'll do, we'll just swing over to them, tune them in so that we can hear them fine and uh, they're, they're legible. 
then we'll uh, begin talking to them if they're if they're open for a QSO. Obviously, if they're in in a QSO, uh, we, won't, we won't butt in. So then, once the QSO is done, then we can go on and have another QSO. Uh, and uh, also, I've got another little cheat sheet right here. You see, high to the left and low to the right. Uh, it just makes it easier so that you don't have to think too much about anything, <laughs> at least for me. So if their voice is, is too low uh, on the uh, uh, radio, then I will turn to the left and make the voice higher. So left is high, right is low. Make their voice higher, turn the VFO knob to the left. Make the voice lower. Turn the VFO knob to the right. So, if their voice is too low, I'll just simply turn the VFO knob to the left and tune them in, and we're good. Then we can have a pretty good QSO, and, and uh, during a QSO, I will adjust the VFO knob a little bit, a little bit, just to kind of keep them tuned in, because uh, Doppler is not perfect, but it does track very nicely. And you could feasibly go a full a full Q show without uh, without tuning them in, but I I do like to tune them in just a little bit. So there we go. That is basically how I do that, and it is working really well for me. It's it's just working excellent. And uh, uh, oh, another thing that I'll do is I'll go to the quick quick menu here, and I'll go down to record start, and I'll hit record. When, uh, when I first start, and then that keeps the uh, recording feature recording for the whole pass, and when the pass is done, I'll go back into quit, and I'll hit uh, stop recording, and then uh, it's a done deal. So, how about that? I think, uh, I think I've covered it pretty well. So, SAT, uh, SAT PC32, and uh, using the up and down arrows to tune my voice in so that uh, I can hear myself in a normal voice, up, down, and I usually, sometimes I have to go as high as five or 600, uh, as you can see there, sometimes uh, not. Sometimes the uh, average is about 200. I'll usually go 200 one side or the other on the up and down arrows. And, uh, uh, that's usually pretty good. Like I say, once in a while I have to creep up to three or four or sometimes 500, but uh, uh, not very often. And then again, Ham Radio Deluxe and the tracking of the satellite. Uh, visual, I just like the eye candy. I like the visual of Ham Radio Deluxe. Uh, it just gives me a really good overall picture. So, Ham Radio Deluxe, tracking the satellite on one computer, and SAT PC 32 on another computer, right in front of me and right in front of the radio, taking care of the Doppler frequency shift. There we go. I hope that helps. And, uh, like I say, it's not. Uh, uh, it really wasn't worth doing a uh, uh, an actual contact because we all. Uh, you can hear my contacts from previous videos and other contacts, but a lot of people want to know just exactly how this is done, and that's how I do it. So there we go. I hope this helps somebody. Uh, I know it would help me six months ago if I had this video to look at. Seventy threes. We'll talk to you in the next video. This is N7RBP. We are QRT.